<laughs> it's time for another How Billy How To. Today we're going to get into this rat's nest of a car stereo. Um, if you've never installed a car stereo, this might be a kind of scary task. You see all these wires, you're like, what in the fuck am I going to do here? How do I do this? I don't know what I'm doing. Well, that's okay. Most people don't. So, um, number one thing, um, make sure your power is off, key is off, and it's actually best to have your uh, battery disconnected for this. Now, for pa finding your power wire and your net ground wire and everything, your best bet is to do that with a multimeter, one of these. If you don't know how to use one of these, you, there's lots of videos out there telling you how. Hi, puppy. Yes, you want to be in the video, I know. But uh, get yourself a multimeter. Make sure, strip all your wires, but make sure none of them are touching. You know, though these are everywhere, none of them are touching. Put your key to the on position. Find a negative somewhere that you can go on to. Like you can even just use the chassis metal down in there. Or if you're pretty sure that bl they've used black for an actual ground. Sometimes you can't go by colors, guys. Sometimes black is actually positive. But 99% of the time it's not. So you go with, let's say this is your negative or what you think is the negative. And you just keep testing. Test this wire, test this wire, test that wire with the key on and see where your your power wire is now so you don't have a multimeter how are you gonna do that well find an old brake light something like that unfortunately I didn't have one here to show you but even an old light bulb would work a light bulb will light with 12 volts so basically any kind of light bulb and again same kind of thing find your black wire and then uh, just test other wires. Usually you're going to find that a lot of the times the uh, power wires are red, brown, yellow, orange, but they sometimes are green, black, you know, and then, uh, you know, blue, and other colors. So you can never trust the color coding. Another thing you could sometimes go by is the actual thickness of your wire. Um, this isn't a good indicator of that because all the wires are the same size. But quite often your power and ground and battery wires are actually slightly larger than your speaker wires. Like I said, this one's not the same so I can't really show you that. But uh, in a lot of vehicles that's the case. And even other wiring, when it comes to 12 volt, you'll find that uh, your power wires are almost always bigger than your other wires. So, you found your power, you can power up your deck. Now, how are you going to find your speakers? Now, if you're like I've been in the far distant past, you'd actually go and hook it up speaker by speaker, one by one, trying to figure out which speaker goes where. Um, but unfortunately, or rather fortunately, I don't have to do that anymore. There's a real easy little trick that you can do to find your speaker wires. Now, luckily in this one they're actually color coded and a lot of time they are. Um, you got your two greens, your two, well that's actually one white, one gray, two grays, your two blues, your two whites, your two reds. Those probably won't match up with your uh, your car stereo. Uh, wiring diagram. It usually uses purple, gray, green, and white. But uh, again, that's not too important. What you want to determine is, okay, you know that these two green wires are a speaker wire, but which speaker? Well, you take yourself a battery. Now, I only have this battery here. Um, but you usually use a 9 volt, because a 9 volt you can uh, touch to the, two or to the two wires much easier than uh, trying to touch a big old ba uh, AA battery. But, you just take it and for them, I don't have any speakers in this. All the speakers are actually disconnected in my tracker here. So I just brought this speaker along. 
I brought this speaker along so I could uh, show this to you guys. Um, this is just your average door speaker. Um, nothing too special though, it's a decent door speaker, it's a dual 140 watt speaker. It doesn't matter what kind of speaker it is, this will work for any speaker. Uh, you can even do this with your 12 volts if you wanted to, if you determined which wires were your 12 volts. You can use your 12 volts, but it's best not to put too much power through your speakers because they're not really designed to put power through them. But literally, you just kind of take your uh, battery. I don't know if I can do this with one hand, but I'm going to try. And there you go. Hear that, that static? See the speaker so that's all you have to do put power to it so let's say if these speakers were hooked up I put power to that and boom that speaker started making noise well then I know it's my front left speaker or my front right speaker rather and you know vice versa for all the other doors and speakers and such you know you just take your battery and the other thing is you're not going to hurt it if you do the wrong ones, it doesn't hurt anything. You're not going to hurt anything doing this this way. Um, but this will determine which speakers are where. That way you don't have to guess it and possibly hook up your deck wrong and blow something up. It's actually a really easy way to do this. Um, I wish I would have had a 9 volt to show you guys to make show you how much easier even a 9 volt is. But uh, it's a great way to just test the speaker too. Um, in a pinch, you know, if you're, you suspect a dead speaker, just try it. And if your speaker doesn't make noise, well, it's probably not working. Though that could be caused by, like, a broken tinsel lead, or, um, further down inside where the tinsel lead goes through the speaker down into the coil. But, you know, there's lots of things it could be. But anyways, I hope you guys help... <laughs> I hope I learn how to talk someday. I really do. But <laughs> I hope this video helped you guys out. And uh, maybe you learned something from it. If you got any questions about stereo installs, feel free to ask. Um, I'm pretty experienced uh, when it comes to that. I've definitely installed a lot of stereos over the years. Um, and, you know, I'll probably actually be doing another... Let me just try something here, guys. Oh, God. Yeah, that's a little better, isn't it? I thought we were a little zoomed in. But in the near future, uh, when I actually put a stereo in this rig that I'm in right now, I will do a video of how to wire these up, or how to wire up an amp and subs. Um, I know a lot of you guys already know this stuff, probably, and you'll know how to do that. But you know what? I'm just doing videos for everybody. Um, not everybody knows how to do this stuff, so... I thought it'd make it easier for a few people. Maybe, you know, make brighten up somebody's day. I know, you know, when I learned this trick, it was a definite game changer. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, you know, stab them down there in the comment section, of course. Or send me a personal message if you really are so inclined. I do respond to them, eventually at least. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's how you wire up a car stereo, the quick and dirty of it. Now there's other things that you have to get into. Sometimes you have to wire in a high pass filter thing on the back, you know, just take your signal off your back speaker wires or whatnot if you don't have a deck. Oh, there's a crazy animal back there. There he is. <laughs> But, you know, that's just for if you don't have um, sub-outputs, you know, you can't run RCAs back to your amp. Um, but I'm not going to go over that. That's kind of its own thing, and I don't have one of those to show you guys anyways, and even if I did, um, I definitely don't really tend to use them. I've only installed once one in my life. And I probably won't install a hell of a lot more. The only reason I did install the one was because the factory deck that the guy had was part of the dash. I can't remember which vehicle, what kind of vehicle it was, but it was literally part of the dash. And we couldn't put a aftermarket stereo in because it just didn't fit. There was no way to fit it in. Like the way the stereos are just molded into the dash as one piece. So we had to... Uh, 
do a different route but uh yeah i actually got paid to do that one i've actually been paid to put in subsystems and, and do installs and stuff like that because i can actually do it properly not that i always do i do when i'm getting paid but when i'm doing it for myself meh who cares but you know it's not that hard to do a professional job um you know your big thing is uh connecting your wires properly and making sure that they're a good tight connection not that they're not going to fall apart i've twisted and taped many many connections that have lasted as long as the stereo or as long as the vehicle um but i've seen lots of connections from shops where they used proper connectors and did it wrong so you know you got to know what you're doing with your connections make sure your connections are good and tight and everything's connected to what it should be so you're not blowing fuses and frying your amp but anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I'll be coming out with a lot more uh, how-to videos here in the near future, so uh, stay tuned for those. And if you have any requests for a how-to video, feel free to stab that down below as well. I'm always open to suggestion when it comes to that kind of thing. But uh, till next time, this is Dad Jed, hoping that uh, I'm keeping you handy, and uh, hope I get you out of a jam, and hope I can help you out somehow. <laughs> Talk to you next time.